Hello, welcome to Revenant Reads. I'm Vin, and today we're taking a look at the Nathan Hale's Hazardous Tales series. So in the world of Booktube, March is, among many other things and many other events, uh, it is middle grade March, where uh, many readers will purposely read middle grade fiction. And this series, I, quite middle grade, I think this is maybe more young adult, um, written, I think, more especially for a middle school crowd. Uh, this is a series that came under my radar over the last few years. Some people have recommended it to me um, for various reasons, um, both as an educator and also as a father, uh, you know, reading with his son or trying to you know, pass on historical texts to a young reader. Um, this was often... This often came up very highly recommended. Um, and a few things happened over the past month or so that really has made me dive into these. Uh, the first thing is that, um, as I mentioned, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a middle school social studies teacher. And I wanted to create a way where I can talk more history with the kids and also celebrate and encourage more reading. So a lot of things kind of came together. And I ultimately decided to create a monthly history book club um, at the middle school where I work. And the essential idea, I'm going to put these down for a moment, um, the essential idea behind the book club is every month we're going to kind of switch it up, but it's all about history and it's all about reading history. Uh, so it might be a nonfiction historical work that we read together. And participation in this is voluntary, but it's across all three grades, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. Um, anybody can participate in any month. They're not obligated to every single month, but they can kind of jump on, jump off as they, you know, as they find interest. Um, so we might read nonfiction history. We could read uh, historical fiction. We could also read graphic novels, which is what these are. And I teamed up with our um, school librarian uh, to come up with some ideas. And for the first month of March, what we decided to do was focus on the Nathan Hale's Hazardous Tales. She has had many students kind of fall in love with this series and uh, just, you know, hungrily look for the the next edition when it comes out into the library. And um, <clears throat> we decided that in order to generate a lot of interest in the history uh, book club, uh, we would kind of do a little bit of a choose your own adventure. Uh, we asked students to choose a book out of the series to read in the month of March, and we are meeting weekly to discuss what we're learning and uh, discuss the series. So with that in mind, I decided, you know, I wanted to read some of these so I can discuss them with the students. I had not read this before. Um, you know, the, the, the librarian was also recommending that maybe we start with this, and she had actually not really read them before either, but she knew about the love that the students had for them. So I picked up a box set fairly cheap online. Um, they're not always the cheapest books, but you can sometimes find deals. And I started with the first book in the series. You don't have to go in order, but it does help, I think, to read this first one to understand the overall idea behind the series. Uh, so it is One Dead Spy. Now, of course, Nathan Hale, right? The author and illustrator is named Nathan Hale, uh, but the narrator of all of these books is also Nathan Hale. Uh, the historical Nathan Hale. So this is actually uh, my home state of Connecticut. This is the state hero of Connecticut. And for those who don't know, Nathan Hale was a school teacher uh, who during the American Revolution, early on the revolution, he uh, worked as a spy for George Washington uh, to spy on the British, but he was not very good at his job. And he ended up getting caught and hanged. And he went down in history books for having some very famous last words, uh, which were essentially, my only regret is that I have but one life to give for my country. Um, that's enough to, you know, put an epitaph on your memory. And in this book, in kind of comic book form, uh, he is on the gallows, ready to be hanged. This is the executioner, that's the British officer, ready to hang him. And a giant history book appears and gobbles him up. Um and then spits him back out. And from that point on, he knows all of history. And he's essentially delaying his own execution by giving these two figures uh, stories about the past. Um, and a little bit of magic involved as well, where he can show the events to them and almost like a, you know, something like a, a movie screen um, so they can see these. And I thought, oh, that's a really fun idea, you know, and I've always, I've always loved comic books, I love history. I thought this would be a great introduction to the series, and I really enjoyed this. There was a lot of humor. Um, some of the humor definitely made me laugh. Uh, some of it is a little more for a younger audience, like 
the dim-witted executioner, some of his humor. I think he'll work with a younger crowd than with an adult crowd. Um, but overall, what they did, uh, with a little bit of humor and levity, but also at times when it had to be seriousness, uh, it gave us a pretty good rundown of how the beginning of the American Revolution occurred. Um, at least, like, you know, maybe the first year or so of the conflict. So I thought, okay, you know, I, I like this. I, I, was, I was impressed with this. But I bought a box set. So I'm like, okay, let's, let's go on to the next one. So then the next one I read was this one here. Um, Trees, Trenches, Mud, and Blood. Um, this is essentially an overview of World War I. And this I knew was going to be the real test. Uh, World War I is an incredibly complicated event. Uh, a, a, you know, a, a tangle of, um, of complexity. <laughs> uh, just trying to figure out why that war started and how it went. Um, so I knew that was difficult. I also knew this is a very, very serious historical subject. You have huge, huge amounts of suffering going on here and trauma and you know how much how much humor is going to be thrown in here how is it going to be uh portrayed so i knew this is really going to be the test of how i felt about this series and i have to say this is the one that kind of sold me on the whole thing um this is the one that won me over i thought that what nathan hale did in this i mean the author illustrator um what he did in this was actually very impressive uh he takes a complicated war, and he breaks it down without making it oversimplified, uh, without, you know, basically insulting the intelligence of a middle school age reader. Um, and he makes it digestible. Uh, he makes the whole thing accessible, even while doing kind of strange comic book things, um, like having the various countries depicted as animals, uh, which, you know, is a very kind of childlike comic book thing to do and I thought that would be distracting but it really wasn't and I understand from an illustrator's point of view um it makes a younger reader especially able to tell the different countries apart which they wouldn't be able to do just by you know trying to do their uniforms so it, I totally understand why he took that route and that gave some opportunities for humor but the humor doesn't come at the expense of expense of the victims of those people who suffered and he does a very good job of portraying just how horrible this war was, just how crazy and out of control it was. And we also see some interesting artistic license uh, within this as well. Um, throughout it, the god Ares um, is depicted. And every single year that we enter in the war, the god of Ares gets more and more grotesque and monstrous and also mechanical. Uh, here's this one for, for 1916, right, as he continues to, to grow more horrific. Uh, as the war rages year after year, um, it's pretty, pretty cool artistic stuff in this. And like I said, I was very impressed. And also, he at the very end, uh, it's nice every every time the uh, the front pages here um, always give us a nice map to let us know what everything uh, everything was orientated. Um, he always gives us also a pretty good, pretty good solid bibliography. That's what we have here. Um, a lot of sources, and he even has some comics that are not kid-friendly. Uh, just a few months ago, I had um, reviewed or discussed, it was A War of the Trenches by Jacques Tardy, um, and he has that as one of the resources, which is a very adult but very effective graphic novel about World War I. So I was like, okay, uh, I see what he's doing here, and I'm impressed. Um, so then I went on and I read each, basically each weekend, I'm just picking up one of these things and reading them. Uh, so this weekend, I, just this morning, I read this very quickly this morning, actually. Um, I read the underground abductor, uh, about Harriet Tubman and this is her story. So, you know, we, we go from kind of a, a, sh a look at one year in a war, uh, from the experience of Nathan Hale here, uh, to a whole overview of an entire war that's very complex. And now we're basically looking at the life of one individual. Um, so we're, we're changing up uh, how we're doing things. And once again, I was really impressed. Uh, it's, you know, the, the illustrations are, they're, they're not super detailed. Um, they're a little bit cartoonish in certain ways, um, but they're never, they're never bad at all. Um, and once again, he has some cool artistic license in here. Uh, I really liked uh, these sorts of things where you have the uh, the slave hunters um, going around. Here we go. Um, 
we have shots like this, this artistic license, to show us uh, these are the slave hunters searching the city, and their eyes are like spotlights. It reminded me of the tripods in War of the Worlds, searching out victims and cities. Uh, really, really cool imagery. Um, but of course, you know, that's not to be confused with what's really happening. And he makes it very clear when he's kind of showing artistic license, when he's showing something of reality. But he did a great job of explaining Harriet Tubman's life and about how dangerous it was to try and escape and, you know, what, what life under slavery was like. And uh, we even have appearances by people like John Brown. And he shows John Brown, I think, in a very balanced way. Um, John Brown's intentions, you know, were probably admirable. Um, his methods, maybe not so, especially when he talks, he doesn't shy away from the massacres that, uh, that John Brown committed. Um, and he also doesn't forget to compliment John Brown on that glorious beard that he had. Um, so I was happy to see that. Uh, but we get, you know, depictions of Frederick Douglass. And I also like this because in the very middle of the book, he has, um, a little comic. It was, um, I think it was called Tiny Frederick Douglass. Uh, and he's tiny because it's the way he could fit his story on here. And it's basically Frederick Douglass's early life, learning to read um, uh, as a slave. And um, that stuff was all pretty nice. And in, in here it says, you know, this is just the first part. If you want part two, you got to read the rest of this to get to the end. But then at the end, he has uh, Frederick Douglass basically telling the reader, don't read a comic book, you know, uh, let's, let's get out of here. If you really want to know my story, read my stuff. So I like how he's still telling these younger readers to go to the source material, go and read Frederick Douglass. Um, you don't need to get it in comic book form. You don't need me to tell you about it. You can actually just go read his words. So I respected that. And what, you know, once again, we have some pretty cool, uh, you know, some helpful maps. So even as an adult reader, I was still learning things in here. And things like this helped me to understand better um, some very complex wars. So, you know, I've, I've already ordered another box set for this. Um, for our History Club, History Book Club, we had our first meeting um, just this past week, and we had almost 20 kids show up, and most of them really seem enthusiastic about it, and I've seen some of them carrying around the books already uh, with them. Um, and some of them I know are struggling readers, and so it's terrific to know that you know, a series like this has attracted their attention and, um, you know, made them want to dive in. Uh, some of those students are new to the district, so I'm able to, you know, get to know students um, in a new way. Um, it's also, this club's letting me, I teach seventh grade, so I'm going to get get to know some sixth grade students better that I'll have next year. And I'm able to reconnect with some eighth grade students that I had, you know, in the class last year. Um, so I'm hoping that this is going to continue to be a um, uh, a nice, uh, nice history club that I'll continue to have participation. Um, every month, though, we're going to change it up, so I'm, I expect participation to vary. But I do think that this Nathan Hale's Hazardous Tales is definitely going to be a very big hit. And like I said, I'm actually quite impressed, and even as an adult, I'm enjoying it and still learning. So I would certainly recommend this to uh, anybody who likes, you know, uh, if people are already reading middle grade fiction, um, give it a shot. Uh, we are, we currently also have a big history event going on, um, in book two, uh, Historathon 2023, an event that I, I created, but that I am, um, joined <clears throat> by some awesome co-hosts and also just amazing participants where we are, where we are reading, um, nonfiction history, uh, throughout 2023. And we have divided it into, uh, divided the year into four quarters. Uh, the first quarter is prehistory up to 500 CE. Most of the, well, yeah, all of the uh, Nathan Hale's Hazardous Tales books, um, they cover um, period, uh, sorry, quarter three and four. So none of them actually fit that. But uh, if somebody wants to read some middle grade to, you know, almost young adult history um, in graphic novel form for March, for middle grade March, I would highly recommend this series. Um, I think it is pretty probably a good idea to start with One Dead Spy uh, if you intend to read more than one, but really, you know, you, you can kind of bounce around and figure out what's going on. Uh, but anyhow, those are my thoughts on at least this first box set that I've gotten of Nathan Hale's Hazardous Tales. You don't have to read them in any particular order, but I do recommend that you give it a shot. So thank you for watching, and as always, thank you for two.